stay in the scriptures, doing what I gotta do to stay uplifted. Stay in the Bible and I stay with a pistol. Nah, I ain't part of it. I stay in the Shalom, Israel. Shalom, Shalom. You know, first and foremost, want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And this video is going into this 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 specific topic right here is for a lot of brothers and sisters, man. A lot of our brothers and sisters need to hear this topic. It need to be spoke on. You know, it need to be spoke on because we 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 forgot that we captives. You know, a lot of our people forgot that we captives, man. A lot of our people don't know that it's something greater ahead. Like I was saying in my uh, video yesterday, a lot of our people don't know that it's something greater ahead. They're not looking or uh, thinking about Jerusalem. People ain't searching pictures of Jerusalem, how it look over there, how it used to be. People ain't imagining being in Jerusalem. People ain't imagining, imagining having gold, having servants and handmaids, having cattle right having to not work no more having to not punch in uh, a clock everlasting rest no crying on uh, immortal bodies spiritual powers chew multiple wives folks ain't thinking about that stuff man you know what i'm saying folks not thinking about the kingdom of heaven folks is not thinking about the things that's to come no yen, no gmo foods no chemtrails in the sky no polluted water. No so-called white man ruling over you. He going to be exterminated after he do his time in slavery. We not thinking about these things. The only thing that we thinking about as men and women, you know, as um being so-called black people is thinking about that check. That money. How to get rich. How I'm going to get this money. Work, work, work. Let's work, work, work. We so we been we we been here in America so long that all we want to do is work. Our, we can't even keep the Sabbath day. We make the Sabbath day hard because we don't want to stop working. One day, we don't want to we don't want to we don't want to not work on the Sabbath day. Cause we trying to get to that bag. We trying to get that money, man. Right, but let me get this priest up because I'm gonna say this: it's nothing wrong. Cause the Bible said this, it's nothing wrong with um with having money, cause we know the Most High God increased a lot of our forefathers in captivity. He increased Joseph, you know, under uh, under the Egyptians, you know, Joseph, you know, he was second under Pharaoh. He increased Daniel. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like he can increase you in captivity, but the thing about it is, those men were keeping the commandments. Those men knew that if I gotta if I gotta lose all this money right now to follow. To the most high God, I'ma do it. They had that mindset. I'ma I'ma drop this money right now. I'ma drop this position I'm in. Moses dropped the position he was in for his people. For the most high God, man. For the most high God's people. So let me get this preset right here. Had to make sure it was still recording. This proverb 13 and 22, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children and the wealth of the sinners laid up for the just. See, so the Bible said a good man leaving inheritance for his children's children. So it's good to pass down things. You know, it's good to work and things like that to pass down things, you know, for, for your children's children. Generational wealth, something that we don't really have in the black and Latino community. So that's a good thing to do that. But if you're not keeping the laws, statutes and commandments. But you just focus on the wealth part. You just focus on the money part. Well, I got to get this generational wealth for my children's children. But you ain't really focused on the spiritual part. Because once you die, you can't take this with you. This money, these things that you have, you can't take this with you. So that's why the Bible said also train up a child with you. Let me get that priest up. Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child... In the way he should go, and when he is old, he would not, he would not depart from it. So you have to, we got to train up our children to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments under the Most High God. We a lot of us, so called Black and Hispanic, we tra we train up our children and showing them how to survive in this world, but we don't show them the other side on how to survive with the Most High God. He confers without the Most High God. 
you may have things, right? You may be getting things from not keeping the commandments, you know, because you were bailing. If you ain't keeping the commandments, you, if, if you're not keeping the commandments, you basically following Satan. You don't you don't have to sell your soul by just signing a contract in blood, by just bowing down to the so-called white man and say you're a rapper about killing your brother and get a deal. It does not you don't have to sell your soul. That's not the only way to sell your soul. You can sell your soul by not keeping these commandments. Because if you're not keeping the commandments, who you following? Who is really blessing you? You see what I'm saying? The most high God say he don't hear sinners. That's Proverbs. Let me get that. Let me get that. Let me get that. Proverbs 29. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer should be an abomination. A lot of our people don't even pray. A lot of our people be so focused on waking up and prospering in America and Babylon the Great, which this place is going to be destroyed. It's temporary. A lot of our people wake up ready to prosper in America. They don't even pray before they wake up. They don't even read the scriptures. Not, not giving the most high God no time. But we but we focus on, you know, how can I get this much money? How can I get this? I got this saved up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. But you ain't checking in with the most high. You ain't seeing how you do. You ain't keeping the Sabbath day. You ain't keeping his feast days. You ain't wearing your fringes. You ain't you not doing nothing that the Most High God wants you to do. So that's why when all hell break loose, when this economy, we know that this economy crashing. When you call upon the name of the Lord during that hour, that uh, that hour of temptation, He not gonna hear you. He not gonna listen to you because you didn't even live how He wanted you to live during the time of you being here on Earth. Because all you wanted to do was work, work, work. All you want to do is make money, make money, but you didn't want to see how can I please the Most High God? How can I, you know, put the Most High God first? Then, you know, once I got the Most High God first, you know, put Him first and I'm keeping these commandments, now I understand that my the Most High God is going to be over me. He going to give me the money. He going to make something straight. So I'm still going to be hustling and getting money, you know, giving an inheritance down to my children, children, but also going to keep these commandments. Because that's what I've been commanded to do. That's how you show yourself as being a man. Let me get that priest up. This is how you show yourself as being a man according to the Bible. Let me get it. A lot of people got it messed up, man. Hey, all this, you know what I'm saying? All. Let me get this priest up. First Kings 2 and 2. Now the days of David drew now that he should die. So this is going to basically um David finna die, man. He finna tell his son Solomon what to do and how to be a man, according to the Bible. Because a man, a man is not how America teach you how to be a man. Oh, bro, you hustling, bro. Oh, that boy, that boy without smashing all the females. He all, all the money, he flossing. That's a man right there. He got a gun on his side, sagging his pants. That's a man right there. Ain't breaking the Sabbath day. That's a man right there. He working all, he working. He working every uh every day. You know what I'm saying? He working from Monday to Monday through Saturday, breaking the Sabbath day. But he a man though. He getting that money though. But he broke the Sabbath day. How do you show yourself as being a man? Now the days of David drew now that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. So David told him, hey, show yourself a man. Be strong on this earth. When I die, you're going to be here. I want you to be strong on this earth and show yourself a man. Now how do you show yourself a man? Verse 3. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou does and whither thou turn it thyself. So that's how you show yourself a man according to the Bible, by walking in the ways of the Most High God. That's how you're going to prosper. That's how, a lot, that's how our forefathers and foremothers prosper. That's, that's how they prosper and they wealth. You can prosper. You can prosper without keeping the commandments for a short period of time. But how long is that gonna last? You ain't keeping the commandments. The Most High God can easily take that away from you. He can easily injure you to the point he can paralyze you. See, 
A lot of people don't think about stuff like this. He can paralyze you. He can make your seed, your children that you that you have be wicked. So now you just, like Solomon said, all is vanity. Like you just, you just literally work, work. That you been been a workaholic. You ain't been taking no breaks. Just imagine you've been working, working, working just to have your inheritance. You've been, you passed down, you just have, you have children. You pass down the inheritance to your children, children, and they wicked. Cause you didn't keep, you didn't teach them how to keep the, you didn't teach them to walk under the most high God commandments. Now, do you have children? Now they wicked. Now they don't, now, now they wicked. So they don't, they, don't, they spending all the money. All the money that you made for your business, they, they spending it all up. Gambling with it. Shoe. Selling dope with it. They turning the all your stuff that you had. They taking it and destroying it. They leaving it there. They ain't messing with it. They don't, now they, they, they doing all type of crazy stuff. But that's what happens when you don't raise your children under lost. And you're not keeping the commandments. And you have children. And you don't teach them how to keep the commandments. So now they can, they can grow up. And they ain't keeping the commandments. They can get caught up in all different type of madness that's going on in this world because they're not protected by the Most High God. When you don't keep the commandments, you're not protected. You easy bait. Like I said, you can get paralyzed. Whatever you do, you can get you can get wrecked, get paralyzed. You get brain damage. Like I said, your kids can get uh can grow up with uh be wicked. So what's going on? How you gonna be able to do this? But that what I'm, that's what I'm saying. You have to keep these commandments, man. These commandments are very, very important. And if you don't keep the commandments and you turn your ear from hearing the commandments, you want to do what you want to do. The Bible said you in witchcraft. Let me get that. Let me get that. I think it's 15 and 23. 1 Samuel 15 and 23. He said, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So th the Bible said when you rebel against the most high God, when you rebel against these law statutes and commandments, when you know that you, you know what you're supposed to be doing and you rebel and don't want to do it, and you still do wickedness, you still go off and not keep the commandment. The Bible said, um, that's like, that's a sin of witchcraft. So you know how you would see a witch or somebody doing witchcraft, you know, it's casting spells upon people and you look at them crazy. Like, oh no, I ain't finna go over that's voodoo. No, I ain't finna go over there. Them folks wicked, them folks evil. But the most I got look at you as the same as that person doing voodoo because you are not keeping the commandments of the Most High God. And that person not keeping the commandments of the Most High God. That person that's doing witchcraft, they do, it, they do whatever they want to do. You do whatever you want to do. That person doing witchcraft don't care nothing about the Sabbath day. You don't care nothing about the Sabbath day. That person doing witchcraft, they doing all type of crazy stuff. And you doing all type of crazy stuff. So what's the difference between you and that person that doing witchcraft besides they can they casting spells? They live in the same, they breaking the Sabbath, they breaking the commandments, just like how you breaking the commandments. So you on the same level as that person that's doing witchcraft. That's how the most high God look at it, man. Right, so a lot of our people are literally freely worshiping Satan and don't even know it. Cause when you're not keeping these commandments, you worshiping Satan. When you wake up at when you wake up when you wake up on the Sabbath day and go work, you are literally serving them Satan. When you bite that pork sandwich, you are worshiping Satan. When you when you uh when you keeping these hot these uh these uh, satanic holidays like Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, Valentine's Day, uh, St. Patrick's Day, Thanksgiving. These days, there's nowhere in the Bible. When you keep these days, you are... Uh, uh, I think I just had a brain fart. I just had a brain fart. But basically, when you keeping these days, right there, um, you in witchcraft, basically. The most I got, look at you as a witch. Because you rebelling against... You know how, think about that. You are literally, the most high God literally gave you a manual, a guide, a book on how to live. All you got to do is read it, 
follow it and live like this. But for you to be able, and somebody, if somebody told you, if you might not even read it, but somebody told you how you supposed to be living as an Israelite, and you be like, nah, okay, I understand, but I'm going to still do this. Okay, I understand, but I'm still bound on this day. You rebelling against the Heavenly Father. You are literally rebelling against the creator of the universe. That's how serious it is. You are rebelling against the Heavenly Father. The God of Israel. The creator of the universe, of the heavens, of the waters, everything you see, of you. He created you. So you're going to rebel against him? And he's giving you... Let me get this priest up. This is the book of 1 John 5 and 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. The Most High God is saying... His commandments is not hard to keep. His commandments are not grievous. Our people, we the ones that make his commandments hard. It's nothing hard by not eating crab, lead, shrimp, lobster, and pork. It's nothing hard about that. It's nothing hard about wearing your fringes. It's nothing hard about that. It's nothing hard about keeping the Sabbath day holy. One day, one day to not work, buy, sell, or cook. We can't do that for one day. But we want the Most High God to come and send his son down to deliver us. And we can't keep the Sabbath day. We're making it hard. It's only one day. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Now, this is this is what I'm this is what the Bible is talking about, man. Right? This is why a lot of a lot of people are gonna die in that time, man. Because of, of of how we make it seem. We're making it seem like it's hard to keep these commandments. It's all about if you want to serve the Most High God or not. If you want to be righteous or you want to be wicked. You want to obey the Most High God or, or you want to be rebellious. And be as a sin of witchcraft. That's all, that's all it is. It's not hard. Our people just love Babylon so much. Our people love America. A lot of our people say they hate this place. But our people don't want to leave this place, man. They love the little money that so-called white man give them with the sl slave master face on it, which that money don't, don't even got no value to it. We love that money. We love the car, the Mercedes that you drive, the Benz, the Apollo. We love the cars that the white man give us. You still got to pay car note. Right? We love the house that we live in. We love eating this, this GMO food. We love the so-called white man ruling over us. We love these things, man. Our people don't want to leave America. The benefits that they give you. Especially when you come out the military. Our people don't want to leave America, man. Or they don't want to leave America. So. They actually had a brand. Yeah, our people do not want to leave America. So. Hold on. Come, but a lot of a lot of our people love America. They love living that American. They love, I, they love waking up every single day. They love waking up, clock in, work. This this is what our people. This is what our people think it is to like. Live, eat, work, die. That's how we live, and we in a we are in a we are in a uh, a a. Hey, uh, what I want to call it? We run on the treadmill, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what we doing. Live, eat, work, die. So nobody want. So nobody want to really think about what's the what. So nobody not. So nobody only really want to think about. So what is it? It gotta be something after this life. Like it gotta be something that we gotta do to get out of this place. This can't be it. This can't be the only thing we got to do is to what live, I mean, live, eat, work, die. This it. We work. We work till we die. You have people eighty years old still working. You know what I'm saying? You have people 80, 80 years old, ninety years old still working, still have to work. So this thing is, we gotta put the Most High God first. You can't take your money with you. 
Period. You can't take it. This when you die, when you die, when you, when the Most High decide to take your soul, your spirit from you, you don't get judged by what you did on this earth. The Most High, the Most High God is gonna judge you by what you did on this earth. Did you keep these commandments? He gonna open up that the book of the. Let me get it. Let me get it. Cause folks don't understand how serious this is, man. A lot of folks don't think they they finna die no time soon. Folks thinking they got plenty of time. They gonna make this money and then they gonna start keeping the commandment. It don't work like that. The Most High God. We are on the Most High God time. The Most High God is not on our time. We the Most High God is not gonna be like, well, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let him make this money. I'm gonna make her make this money. I'm gonna make them get this and start this, and then I'm gonna let them come into the. Uh, I'm gonna let him or her start keeping these commandments. No man, we are on the most high God time. What up? Ain't what priest of power finna get? And what priest that is, man? I think that's um. And uh 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 uh. uh. I want to say it's revelation. I know it's a revelation for sure. Uh, the yep. Then my brother, hey, my brother Eliezer, man, one of his favorite precepts, man, he was put in that camp. Revelation 20 and 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So when your time is up, and it can be any day, you can die tomorrow. You can die two weeks from now. You can die two months from now. You can die a year from now. When you die, the Bible said if you wasn't cast into this book of life, my bad, my bad. He said if you wasn't found written in this book of life. So the most high God got a book of life, a book of life written. And you gonna be we are getting judged by everything that this book says. We gonna he gonna judge us by everything this book says. Did we live by this Bible? Did we live by the words of the most high God? Now, if you wasn't living, you know it, you know. You know if you're living by this book or not. You living by the most high God laws and commandments or not. You know. If you was not found written in this book of life. The Most High God is going to cast you into the lake of fire. You're going to be burning for... You're going to be tormented. Think, you think the Most High God going to... See, I, I got a precept to prove this, though. You think the Most High God going to be like, well, he got... Well, he was... He was he was rich. She was rich. She had, she had her own bakery. Well, she had money. So, I'm going to let them live. Or you think the Most High God going to let you be like, wait, Lord, I got this amount of money. Whatever you need, I can trade this in for my life. Please don't kill me. I got this. I can go to the bank right now. You think the most high God gonna be like that? No. If you're not keeping these commandments, if you wasn't following under the most high God laws and commandments, if you're not found written in this book of life, you're going to die. If you're not keeping the Sabbath day, you're going to die. And it's not no joke. It's not no people think it's well, it's a fairy tale. No. People, we ain't never been. We ain't never really been burnt alive. Your, your soul gonna be burning. Not just your flesh. Your soul, what you are. This is just a shell. Your flesh is a shell. You are a spirit. You're gonna be burning. Think about how hot, how hot it is outside right now. Think about how hot it is when you have the, the, uh, the shower on hot and you kind of touch it. You move your hand back like that. Think about how hot it is when you open up the oven and you feel that heat hit you in the face. Think about how hot that is and you got to move out the way. So how hot you think that lake of fire is going to be? Think about how hot you think that lake of fire is going to be, man. Right? We got to keep these commandments. And you have our people, you know, thinking it's the only way to work, to die. You might have some people say, well, you know, you can you can have your own business. You know what I'm saying? You can have it to the point you can retire early. You can. You can. But when you when you come into this truth, when you keep these commandments, you realize it's not just about you. 
you will never if, if you if you keep in these commandments and, and love your people and you sincere, even if you got the money, you're not going to be able to you're not going to you're not going to you're not going to be comfortable here. It don't matter where you at. It don't matter what you got. It don't matter how big your house is. You're not going to be comfortable here because you always thinking in the back of your mind how your people living. Yeah, you got all this. But look at your people. We st we got to be saved. Yeah, you got this. Yeah, you passing this down to your kids and your kids' kids. But what about your brother that's in the projects? That's growing up, don't know nothing. Don't know no better. They raised like that. Imagine your sisters. Think about your sister that's on the streets, man. That's getting prostituted. She strung out on drugs because the way she grew up. Think about your people. How are people struggling? Last hired, first fired. Killing each other in the streets. Trying to make ends meet. You will never rest. If you love your people, you will never rest. Even if you do got, you will, you will help your people out. But you will understand, you will realize it, it's still not enough for me to help all my people out. So I hate it here. My people get, my people getting uh, uh, oppressed. Even if you got money, you still gonna be getting oppressed. But you're not you're not gonna be getting oppressed like your people that don't have money though. But you still gonna feel for them. You're gonna be like, dang, man. Dang. We gotta get up out of here, man. You know, we gotta get up out. We gotta go to Jerusalem. We gotta go to the motherland so we all can prosper. We all can live. Right? We don't have to worry about no homeless people or no prostitutes in the streets. No kids getting snatched up. We ain't gotta worry about your people like that. You ain't gotta lose sleep thinking about your people. Cause you are, you cause you are, um you are, we'll be in our homeland, man. So let me get these precepts going back into the topic. I'm I'm kind of all over the place, but money can't save you, man. This is what really I want to touch on. Money can't save you in that day of wrath when the Most High God sent His judgment upon this earth. Money is not gonna save you. Money is not even gonna matter soon. Matthew 6 and 19. This is what we own. Brothers and sisters in this truth, Matthew 19, I mean Matthew 6 and 19 through 21. This is what we own, bro. This is what we own. Matthew 6 and 19 through 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust does corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So the Bible says, don't focus. Now, like I said, like the Bible, there's nothing wrong with having wealth and you know uh, having money and providing for your family. You have to do that. We in captivity. But the Bible said, don't lay your heart on those things. The Bible said, they don't lay your, he said, but lay up for yourself. He said, my bad. But lay up for yourself treasure in heaven. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt. My bad, let me start at 19. Lay not up for yourself treasure upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. So the Most High God say, don't focus, don't focus so much. On being rich in America. Don't focus so much on prospering right. This is temporary, bro. This place is what we... This is an illusion. America, this world is an illusion right now, man. Because everything that we see, everything that you see outside is going to be destroyed. So we, we getting this stuff just for it to be destroyed at the end of the day. So don't focus so much on, on prospering and stacking up riches in America. The Bible said in verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. So lay up your riches upon heaven because when you keep these commandments, when you giving charity, when you giving alms, when you going out there laboring, sisters, when you, when you, uh, uh, you know, keeping the commandments, you know, whatever your talent is, rather it may be cooking, rather it may be sewing. Rather, it might be, you know, whatever your talent is. When you're doing your talent that the Most High God gave you, that's you stacking up your riches upon heaven. Because a lot of, our, a lot of, a lot of, we didn't get our reward yet. So people look at us, 
They think we ain't getting a reward out of this what we doing. They think, oh, we just, we just, we just keeping the Sabbath day. We decide not to work, so we ain't getting out of that. Oh, we keep the uh, high holy days, so it's, it's some days that we don't have to, we don't uh, that we're not supposed to come in for work. So they look at it like, oh man, he missing all of his money. He ain't making no money. She ain't making no money. That's how people look at it. But they don't understand. Once we do these things, we keep the Sabbath day. We keep the high holy days, right? We wear our fringes. We do the works of the Most High God. We 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 are literally stacking up our our riches. For heaven, cause you, you you can be rich, you can be the rich, the richest man in America. He gonna have to die. He gonna have to get judged. The richest man, the richest man in the world in America. He not ruling over six or seven cities. He don't got gold with his face on it. Right? He don't have immortal bodies. The richest man in the world. But you, we trying to stack up the riches. We trying to live and prosper in America. But we're not focused on prospering, get this money, and for the kingdom of heaven. Because your works is not going to go unnoticed. Let me get that, man. Let me get that precept, man. The Most High God said, we labor not in vain. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor in, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So that we folks be like, dang, Obadiah always in the word. He always making videos. He always at the park bringing the word out. What he doing? He ain't getting no money. He ain't got no, no uh, collection plate out there. But they don't understand. Our labor is not in vain. Just because man ain't coming up giving us money or giving us gifts for what we're doing. The Most High God, he's stacking it up. Hey, when you fasting, he's stacking up your riches in heaven. Hey, you when you when you throwing your prayers up, you wake up in the middle of the night throwing prayers up, he's stacking up your riches in heaven. When you out there laboring, when you making videos, when you giving charity, giving alms, when you checking on your brothers, seeing if your brother's okay, Right when you loving on your brothers, showing your brothers compassion, when you making sure your family your real straight, when you teaching them how to keep the commandments under the Most High God, you are stacking up your riches for them for heaven, for you to prosper everlasting life. That's what we doing. That's what we own right now, man. We want that. We want that everlasting life. We don't care nothing about this place. America's finished. We all we trying. We trying to. We trying to make it, man. We trying to live because we know we have to pay bills. If we didn't have to pay bills, we wouldn't pay that. We wouldn't work if we didn't have to. We got to work, you know what I'm saying, to, to have things. But we understand that our main job, our main goal, our only thing that's on our mind 24-7 is the kingdom of heaven. It's stacking up our riches and see what can we do better to stack up our riches for the kingdom of heaven, man. That's, it look, it look, we don't, you, like I said, you don't see it right now, but you will see it soon. It's going to show your labor not in vain, brothers and sisters. Our labor is not in vain. The things that we do, passing out flyers. Things that we do is not in vain. And that's when the Most High God going to stack up those riches. He's going to see, gonna, okay, I'm going to remember that. He did this. She did this. He made this video. She made this video for the sisters. All right. Stacking up. That's how it's going to be, man. That's how it goes. He's stacking up riches in heaven. Let me get this priest up. We up, man. You ain't we up, we won't we won't service the handmaids. The only way you gonna get service and handmaids is if you stack up your riches, you know, you stacking up your riches right now for the kingdom of heaven. Even the, the even the the people that's so called rich right now. They don't be having service and handmaids like that. They may have a butler, but a whole nation of people working for them, a whole race of people in the fields working for them. You got gold. You got rubies. 
folks, folks ain't thinking about, folks ain't really on that time. See, we really, we really on that time of, of, uh, of making money. See, people think Kajika, we ain't physical out there. You know, people look at it like, oh, they ain't really getting, they ain't really, they ain't really making, they ain't really pushing forth the effort to be rich in America. But folks don't look at it. Folks think, don't th we own this money. We trying to get this money. We trying to get these riches. We trying to get this wealth in the kingdom of heaven. We focus on that because we know that's everlasting. We're not trying to put all our trust into something that's going to be destroyed. It don't make sense to put your trust into something that you know is going to be destroyed. The whole time you understand that America finna fall. The economy finna collapse. But yet you still don't want to keep the commandments. You still trying to prosper here in America. Trying to save up money. You know what I'm saying? To have whatever you're trying to get. To have all these riches. But... You, you know this place finna fall. You know America finna fall. So what sense does it make to still prosper in all these things? And you know it's finna fall. But instead, you should be focusing on the kingdom of heaven. How can I live after this life? Because this is life after this. How can I live after I die? How can I live when I leave from this life? That should be the main question. Now how That should be the question. Not how can I sub how can I prosper in America? That money gonna be burned up. Money ain't gonna matter soon. So all that stuff that you did, all that money that you made from breaking the Sabbath day, right? Because most of our people got the money from from breaking the feast days and Sabbath day. All that money that you got from being disobedient and you know rebelling, that's not gonna matter. You're not gonna be able to enjoy that when all hell break loose. You're not going to be able to enjoy that money. It, money is not going to mean nothing. Folks going to be throwing money down. Folks going to be using money as tissue. right? Folks going to be using money as all different type of stuff, but not value. Might use it, you know, the, the shower, to use it like a rag. That's what's going to be going on, man. We got to realize that. We got to understand that. This is real. Both things is a joke. Both things is a game, man. We ain't, This is our captivity. This place was made for us to be captive in. We were made to be we were made to serve here, man. So we're not finna be happy here. We're not finna oh, I'm ready to I'm ready, you know, I'm ready to work, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready to, you know, clock in. You know, ready. No. We no, this is cap this is captivity. We hate it here. Cause we understand it's something greater that is great something greater ahead. So we're going to be like, okay, I'm going to get this money, I'm going to get this check, you know, to be able to, you know, provide for my family and things like that. But I'm not going to be overly excited to to uh, work in Babylon and make the little handout of money that we get here and they get taken out by taxes. I'm not going to be excited and joyful here. You know what I'm saying? Money don't even excite me like that. And I'm sure brothers and sisters in the truth feel the same way. We want gold. We want our money with our face on it. We don't want looking at our money got Abraham Lincoln on it, George Washington on it. We don't want that. We want money with our face on it, man. That's what we want. That's what we looking for. That's what we looking. That's what we looking for, man. That's the rest of the type of time we on. Um, my bad. Let me what I'm looking for, man. I'm all. Let me let me let me settle down, man. Um. It's First Timothy. First Timothy six and ten. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So the Bible said, For the love of money is the root of all evil. So we understand that money is not the root of all evil. Because we know that, you know, if you if you don't if you don't worship money and you understand like you know that we you don't need it but we do need it meaning that you don't need money to you don't need money to make you happy but you know that you need money to survive but it's the difference between you loving money the bible said for the love of money is the root of all evil so if you love a lot of our people love money bro like i said the sabbath day be so hard for our people because they love money so much they don't want to let that money go by. They feel like one day it's going to stop them from making money. They can't keep the new moons. They can't keep Feast of Tabernacles. They can't keep uh, 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 Day of Atonement. Because they feel like that one day or those two days that they off, that they ain't going to make no money. They missing out on money. That's the love of You love money. You robbing people for money. You stealing, you stealing from people for money. 
getting people set up for money, scamming for money, going off for money, working, 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 can't stop working. Only thing you think about is work. That you love money. Ain't think about the no. Ain't think about the Most High God. None of your day. How can I please the Most High God? Did I please the Most High God today? Did I read enough today? Did I study enough today? Man, I got, what can I do better today for the Most High God? What can I do better to stack up my riches upon heaven? We ain't, you ain't thinking, people ain't thinking about that. We thinking about money, check, getting a bag, spinning, splurging. I ain't thinking about the Most High God, man. The Most High God say for love of money is the root of all evil. You gonna get put to death. The most, the, you gonna get put to death, man. Simple as that. You gonna get put to death if you ain't keeping these laws, that's just the commandments, and you putting your 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 trust and you putting your love into working. You putting your love into money. To prospering here in America. I wanna prosper here, man. I wanna have this. I wanna have this. I want people to see me and they can look at me like this. I know if I look at, if I have this, they're gonna look at me like this. I'm telling you, man, that. A lot of people gonna a lot of our people gonna die right along with America, man. They wanna be a, they wanna live live that American dream. They wanna live the lifestyle of America. They wanna continue to and be in captivity and continue to work and think there's nothing wrong with we don't question this so we don't think there's nothing wrong with this, man. We okay with working all our all our lives. We okay with the so-called white man being upon our neck. We cool with that as long as we making the money though. As long as we got the bag. Long as we got the stuff, we cool. We don't care about our people though. That's not love. We gotta, we gotta care about our people, man. We should never be happy here. We should never feel like we. The Bible said this is not our race. Let me get that. The Bible said this is not our race. We should never feel comfortable here in America. We should never feel comfortable here in America in Babylon the Great. Micah 2 and 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. So the Bible tells hey, you, arise and depart. Now, it's not talking so much as physically rise and depart, but it's talking about so much as you, your mind and your spirit. The Bible says, arise and depart. This is not your rest. This America is not your rest, man. But yet, our people have been brainwashed and tricked and too comfortable. We've been so we've been here for about four hundred plus years. So we comfortable here now. We comfortable. But the Bible said this ain't your rest. The day you get comfortable is the day Yahweh shall come back and gonna destroy you. That's the day you're gonna get comfortable. We ain't getting brothers and sisters in this truth. We not getting comfortable, man. We shouldn't get comfortable because we know sooner or later we're gonna hear on our phone this is not a test. We're gonna have to be like pyramids on the earth. Folks gonna be trying to kill us. So we're gonna have to be on the run. So we can't get comfortable. Cause the the, the, the time you get comfortable, the time you're gonna the America gonna rock you to sleep. I'm gonna rock you to sleep like a baby. That day you get comfortable, the day you're gonna get rocked to sleep like everybody else. So we can't be comfortable here. We can't feel like we got enough money and we comfortable. And we relaxing and we got our feet kicked up. We can't feel like that. Cause the most our God said it's not our rest. He said, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you even where they saw destruction. So the Bible said, man, this place is polluted. We know America is polluted. This place is this place is the most polluted country on the face of the planet. Hey, certain foods and things that we eat that we eat here in America, other countries is they ban those things. They ban those ingredients over there in their countries. But America, we eat these things. We eat chemicals that kill us. Like I said, chemtrails in the sky, the water polluted. This place is polluted. He said, it shall destroy you even with a sword destruction. So the Bible says, man, this place is going to destroy you, destroy you with a sword destruction. You get, ca get caught up in America if you want to. Get caught up in living this American dream if you want to. You're going to be the one that get caught up right along here with this place. You're going to get destroyed right along with this place, man. Right? Nobody ain't. Let me get this preset right here. Mark 4 and 19. In the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, 
and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. So that's just going into a parable how you have brothers and sisters may hear about the truth. But they they know what they're supposed to be doing is right. But the Bible said the cares of this world. The cares of this world and deceitful deceitfulness. Why do why you say deceitfulness of riches? Because we getting, we getting deceived to stack up all these riches just for just for everything to be destroyed. Or people doing getting riches from, from deceitful things, doing wickedness, ain't keeping the commandments, and they're getting riches. So the cares of this world, our people know to do right. They know to keep the Sabbath day. They know not to celebrate these holidays. They know not to eat pork, crab, legs, shrimp, and lobster. But the cares of this world get them. The cares of the world bring them down. And it choke them. It choke the world. So you might tell somebody, hey, bro, look, listen. You got to keep the Sabbath day. If you don't keep the Sabbath day, you're going to die. If you don't keep the feast day, you might, you're going to you gonna die. And that you, some days you have to be, some days you have to be off work. We are not here. The most I got don't be, the most I got don't want us working every single day. That's not good for your mental health. To even just be working every day. The most I got got us days. That's why he gave us the feast days. The new moons. That's every month. That's why he gave us the Sabbath day, which is every uh it's Friday, sundown, and Saturday, Saturday, sundown. That's why he gave us these. So you can rest. But a lot of our people don't want to take advantage of that rest. So they want to make that money. I can't miss that day, man. Saturday is the Saturday, Saturday is the fastest day. Saturday, Saturday is the day when everybody come in the store and buy. I can't, I can't stop working on Saturday. I can't go to no new moon, cause that if I the day I go to the new moon and stay keep stay home and keep the new moon is the day I don't miss out on money. I don't miss out on the money. I can't. The cares of the world. A lot of people gonna die because the cares of the world. They don't want to live by the Most High God commandments. They want to live by the cares of the world. And the cares of the world gonna choke you, right, and destroy you. At the end of the day. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. First John 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So the Bible says if you, if you, if you love the world, things in the world, if you love doing the things that the world puts, you are enemy to the Most High God. Simple. Ain't nothing else to say. If you ain't keeping these commandments, you love the world. If you ain't keeping these commandments, you love America. Simple. You love you love the you love the people you love the place that has your that got your people captive. You love this place. You love the, you love the you love the narrative that America pushed. You love fulfilling your flesh. That's what the Bible. That's what the Bible says. Ain't nothing here but the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And people love this place, man. You gonna die right along with America, man. Sisters, you gonna die right along with America. Simple as that. If you don't keep these commandments, you are gonna die. That's the only way you are gonna survive. Keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. If you don't keep them, you finish. And you gotta say it like that, cause that's how it's gonna be. I'm not gonna be. If you don't keep the commandments, you're gonna die. You have to keep the commandments. If you don't keep the commandments, you're going to die. I ain't going to be like that. If you don't keep the commandments, you're going to die. You're going to get your head chopped off. You're going to be burning in the lake of fire. That's how I'm going to be. That's how the Bible say. It's like it. It's like it. Let me get this priest up. Salakia means forgive me for any type that's new watching these videos. Salakia just means forgive me in Hebrew. <clears throat> First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. First Timothy 1 
First Timothy chapter six and verse seventeen. Charge them that are rich in this world, and they and they be not high minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in a living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. So don't put your trust in the riches, man. Simple. Put your trust in the Most High God. He is the person that's going to make you rich. Because when it's all said and done, when you in the FEMA camp somewhere by yourself, at the, when, it, when all hell break loose, or when you on the run and you in the woods or you blind, who you going you gonna to trust in your money? You going to trust in the riches that you gain? Or are you going to trust in the Most High? Are you going to trust in the Most High God? We gotta look at things. We gotta look at things down the line. A lot of our people are focused on the moment. A lot of our people's on people are focused on living right now. To the they don't even think about the time that's coming. They don't think about how they are gonna survive without keeping these commandments. They don't think about that. They are thinking about the moment right now. What I'm gonna do right now. So when all hell break loose, a lot of people are gonna be, what's going on? What's going on? Lost because they didn't stack up their riches. In heaven, they didn't stack up their riches. They didn't. They didn't do the works. So they're gonna be the same people that's gonna be, you know, destroyed. And the Bible said that we be rich in good works. Doing good works is way more better than having physical riches. And good works, we know, is keeping the commandments. That's good works. The commandments is a light. That's Proverbs six and twenty three. The commandments is a light. This is this is the work that we're supposed to be doing, keeping these commandments. And the Bible said that's that's you uh they that do good, that they do good that they be rich in good works. So the most I want us to be rich in good works, um, by keeping his commandments, man, by raising our children, our children, children up, not only just giving them wealth and giving them passing them down inheritance, but also teaching them the commandments. Teaching them how to be a man. Teaching them what's going to get them everlasting life. After this life, we teach our people how to survive here, but we don't never teach them how to survive after we die. I mean, after, after, after this life. After the most high take your spirit from you. We trying to teach our children how to live after this life. Everlasting life. It don't make no sense for us, for, for, for us to focus so much on working and having money. And, you know, we give it down to our children and, you know, they ain't keeping no commandments and they die and they get like a fire. So we failed as a parent. We we may have taught, we may, we may have gave them the things they needed for Babylon, how to survive here in this world. But we still failed them because we didn't teach them how to live after this life. See what I'm saying? It's that, that That's more important than anything is teaching and even ourselves focus on how focus on surviving and living I mean, focus on living everlasting after this life right here so I have one more precept Proverbs 6 and 23 I think I had one more precept I think I had one more precept I almost hit an hour man all praise to the most high They already, they already bring this up. Proverbs 11 and 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivered from death. So the Bible says riches, this is why you should be focused more on your spirit. This is why, this is why you should be focused 10 times more on your spirit than getting rich in Babylon. The Bible said, check this out. Proverbs 11 and 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. So your riches is not going to deliver you from your destruction. Period. It's, you finish. But righteousness delivers from death. So just by you keeping the commandments, it's going to deliver you from death. So you're going to have a lot of people, a lot of rich people that have been trying to, or that's been trying to, you know, prosper in America. They're going to be destroyed. But you may have people that don't have much. But they had a, they had a faith. It's keeping the commandments. They're going to prosper. So riches don't mean nothing. Riches only mean something here in this world because everything is the lust of the flesh. 
the lust of the eyes, pride of the world. That's why money is so big here. But after this, during that time of temptation, it's not going to mean nothing. What's going to keep you living, what's going to keep you going during that hour of temptation is how much you stacked up your riches for heaven. What did you do while you was here on this earth? That's what's going to keep you going, man. Simple. That's what's going to keep you going. What all you did on this earth? If you was wicked, you're going to get a wicked punishment. My, my bad, not a wicked punishment. If you was wicked, that's the type of punishment you're going to get by the Most High God. If you was wicked and wasn't keeping no commandments, and when all hell break loose, you're going you to get judged for that. If you was keeping the commandments and you was uh, sincere and diligent, you're going to get a righteous reward. If you wasn't, you're going to get a punishment. Simple as that. No, so Lord, when this video was edifying the brothers and sisters, man, um, just in this, just moving in the spirit, just was examining how a lot of our people be in America, man. We don't think it's nothing else more than this, so we get caught up in America, or even not even just America. I know it's more it's Israelites around the world. We be like that around the world, man. We get caught up in uh, prospering here because we think it's nothing else after this, because our people don't read the Bible, so we thinking that this is it. We thinking, hey, this we here, we here, we're gonna we're gonna adapt here, we're gonna survive here. We was brought here, so we're gonna understand how to live here. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna love it here. You know, cause we ain't going nowhere else. Ain't nothing else. Nobody ain't coming to save us. So let's let's make it, let's get let's get rich here and let's just focus on this. That's what a lot of our people think, man. A lot of our people think this. But it's something greater coming, which is the kingdom of heaven. And we have to make sure we stacking up our riches in heaven. Laying up our riches in heaven. You know, because that's going to be everlasting life. That kingdom going to be forever. Ain't no, ain't nobody finna come in in the kingdom of heaven and destroy nothing in it. Ain't no animals finna come in there and destroy nothing in it. Like you, that, like people can do in America. You can stack up riches here. You can have buildings here. It can be destroyed. All right, they can break down. Somebody can go in there and steal from it, burn it down. Anything can happen with the stuff you have here. But in the kingdom of heaven... Ain't nothing finna go down. Your rich is gonna be yours. Ain't nothing finna go down with it. You know, so this is Obadiah, man. Money can't save you in that day of temptation, in that day of trials, when all hell breaking loose, when famine kicking off, when pestilence kicking off, when nations rising against nations, when kingdoms rising against kingdoms, when you're starving, when your stomach touching your back, when your kids eating each other, when your wife trying to eat you. Money ain't gonna save you in that day. But what's going to save you is them laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. Keep the laws and commandments and live, thus says the Lord. So with that, I want to give all honor and glory to you. How about Shimmy, how about Shai? I say Shalom, Kumya Shalom.